The next section is going to be the gallery in which we will have six different foot images with some nice effects. Each image will have several colored shadows. When we hover over the image then some information will display like the name of the foot, some description and two different lines. The image itself will have some blurry effect and also the shadow of the image will extend nicely and all of those effects will happen smoothly. Alright, let's go ahead and start to create the HTML markup. As usual, let's insert new comments, section 3, end of section 3, then open section element and assign to it class section 3. Next we need here the heading of the section which will be similar to other section headings. So I'm going to copy it from the previous section and then I'm going to change the content. Let's insert here gallery. Alright, so overall we will have six gallery items. They will be represented by the link elements. And before we create them I'm going to open div tag which is going to be the wrapper of those links. I'm going to assign to it class gallery. Next I'm going to open the link tag which will have class gallery link. Besides the class attribute, I'm going to use the title attribute as well. It allows us to display some text once we hover over the link. Let's insert here order now. Alright, so each link element will consist of an image, heading and a paragraph. Let's open image tag and then select gallery img1 from the images folder also i'm going to assign to image class food img next comes h3 heading element let's assign to it class food name and as the content let's insert here pancakes and finally i'm going to insert here paragraph with the class food description and as the content I'm going to put here some dummy text. Okay, so here we have the first item. As we said, overall we will have six of them, so I'm going to duplicate the link element five times and then make some changes. We need here IMG2 and the name is going to be Cupcakes. Then we will have MG3, Hamas. Then for the fourth item, I'm going to insert here Hamburger. The next one is going to be Salmon. As for the sixth item, I'm going to insert here Vegetables. Alright, so that's it about the HTML markup. Now we are ready to start writing some CSS. I'm going to create new comments, section 3, end of section 3, then select section element. At first I'm going to change the background color. Let's make it dark gray using color 333. Three, three. And also I'm going to create some space inside of the section, I mean at the top and bottom of it, using padding with the values 5 RAM and 0. Alright, before we start to customize the gallery, I want to take care of the size of the images because right now they are too big. So let's select image. I'm going to set width to 24% of the viewport of the width. As for the height, I'm going to make it 15 viewport width. I mean 15% of the viewport width. And also I'm going to use object feed cover, which will allow us to maintain the quality of the image. It won't be stretched. Alright, then select gallery, I mean the container of the links. So overall we'll have six links and I'm going to place them in two rows. I'm going to do that using Flexbox. 
we need to set display property to flex and also in order to place images on two rows we need flex wrap with the value wrap so now the images are placed in two rows next I'm going to place them in the center and also create some space between the images so in order to place them in the center we need a line item center and to create some space between the images we need justify content space evenly finally I'm going to create some space between the heading and the gallery let's use margin top with the value 10 rem all right so with the layout we are done let's go ahead and customize the elements of the link let's go ahead and start with the foot names so the name of the foot should be placed at the top left corner of the image so I'm going to set its position to absolute then we need to set the position of the link element to relative because it is a parent element and we need to position heading according to the link and then set the top and left properties for the foot name to 3 rem I mean both of the properties alright so headings are positioned in the right way let's go ahead and customize them I'm going to change the font size let's make it 2 rem also let's increase the font weight I'm going to set it to 700 then let's transform text into uppercase create some space between the letters using letter spacing 0.1 rem and lastly change the color make it white okay that's it about the heading next I'm going to customize the paragraph so let's go ahead and select it first of all I'm going to define its position as absolute and then I'm going to define bottom and left properties I'm going to set bottom property to 3 viewport width as for the left property I'm going to make it 2 RAM so the paragraph is positioned but as you can see the layout of the gallery is messed up I'm going to fix that let's go ahead and create some space between the links using margin I'm going to make it 4 RAM at the top and bottom and 1 RAM on the left and right sides alright so now the problem is fixed let's move on and add some more styles to the paragraph next I'm going to define width and make it 70% then let's change the font size make it 1.5 RAM and also change the font weight I'm going to make it a little bit lighter let's set it to 300 after that let's create some space between the letters make it 0.1 RAM also I'm going to transform text into uppercase and finally change the color make it white alright so with the paragraph we are done it is styled and now I'm going to create two lines one under the heading and the second one on the right side of the paragraph I'm going to create those lines using before and after pseudo elements at first let's create the line on the right side of the paragraph let's use the before pseudo element first of all we need to define the content let's make it empty then I'm going to set the position to absolute and in order to make the line visible let's define the width make it 0.2 RAM also we need to set height to 80% and then change the background color make it white okay so the line is visible but we need to change its position we need to place it on the right side of the paragraph so let's set top position to 2 viewport width as for the left property I'm going to make it 80% alright that's it regarding the before pseudo element now I'm going to create the second line actually both lines will have the same properties so let's go ahead and duplicate this code and then make some changes I'm going to change top position let's make it 30 percent also we need to change left property let's set it to 2 RAM then I'm going to change the width 
let's make it 90% as for the height it's going to be 0.2 rem all right so the lines are created and actually all the elements are almost customized the only thing that I'm going to do before we create a hover effect is to create a multi-level shadow effect. In order to do that we just need to use box shadow property with multiple values like so. So I'm going to create the first shadow. Let's insert here 0.3 RAM, 0.3 RAM, then 0.1 RAM and the color E92929. So the first shadow is created, then go ahead and create the next one. I'm going to insert here 0 0.5 RAM, 0 0.5 RAM, 0 0.1 RAM, and the color A2E946. Then the next one is going to be 0 0.7 RAM, 0 0.7 RAM, 0 0.1 RAM, and the color 297CE9. As for the last one, let's make it 0.9 RAM, 0.9 RAM, 0.1 RAM, and the color E92999. Alright, so here we have the shadows, and now we are ready to create a hover effect. By default, those elements should be hidden, so let's start with the heading. I'm going to make its width 0 and also we need to use here overflow property with the value hidden. So the heading is hidden, next I'm going to hide the paragraph. In case of paragraph I'm going to use just opacity with the value 0 and also visibility hidden. So, as you can see, the paragraph is hidden as well, and now I'm going to hide those two lines. I'm going to set height to 0 for the vertical line. As for the horizontal line, let's set its width to 0. Alright, so all the elements are hidden, and now we can create a hover effect. I'm going to start with the lines, because they should appear firstly. So, let's select gallery link with hover followed by the before pseudo element. We need here to set height to 80%. Let's duplicate this code. I'm going to change before into after. And also instead of height we need width with the value 90%. Besides that, in order to make the effect smoother we have to use transition. We need here height 0.5 seconds. And also we need transition with 0.5 seconds. Okay, so once we hover over the image, then the lines will appear nicely. Next I'm going to display the heading. So let's go ahead and select gallery link with hover followed by the food name. As you remember, we decreased the size of the heading to zero, so we need to set width to 100%. Also, in order to make the effect smoother, again we need transition with the values width 1.5 seconds. And besides that, we need here some delay time, because at first the lines should appear, and then after that we have to display the heading. So let's set delay time to 0.5 seconds. Actually, this transition effect will happen once we hover over the image. So as you see, the heading is starting to display once the lines appear. But when we mouse out, then the heading immediately hides. And in order to fix that, we need another transition, which should be part of the heading itself. Let's set with 2.3 seconds. Ok, so now everything works fine, let's move on and do the same for the paragraph. Let's select gallery link with hover, followed by the foot description. So right now the paragraph has opacity 0 and visibility hidden, 
and now we need opacity with the value 1 visibility visible also we need here transition opacity then the duration 1 second and the delay time but in this case 1 second and in the exact same way we need to use the second transition where I'm going to pass opacity with a duration 0.3 seconds. Alright, so the paragraph works fine and now we have to move on and take care of the image. At first let's change the shadow on hover. So let's go ahead and select again gallery link with hover. Then we need foot image. Actually, I'm going to copy this code from here and just change the values. We need here one RAM twice. Then for the second shadow, we need two RAM. Then the next one is going to be three RAM. And for the last one, we need four RAM. Besides that, again, we have to use transition. Let's insert here all and the duration 0.5 seconds. Alright, so as you can see, the shadow is changing once we hover over the images. Of course, that's not all. We need to add a couple of more things to the image. We need to make it blurry. And for that, we have to use one of the properties called filter with the blur function. Let's use blur and as the value I'm going to place here 0.5 RAM. Okay, so as you can see the image becomes blurry once we hover over it. We can make this effect much nicer if we decrease the opacity of the image. Let's make it 0.5. Alright, so now we have a much better result. And the only thing that we need to do is to increase slightly the scale of the image on hover. For that let's use transform with the scale function. I'm going to increase the scale of the image to 1.1. Alright, so we are almost done. Everything works perfectly. But we have here a tiny issue. As you can see, the vertical line is not quite visible because it ended up behind the image. So in order to fix that, we have to use the Z-index property. Let's make it higher than 0, which is the default value. I'm going to make it 10. Alright, so that's it. We are done with the gallery. I think it looks really nice. We used here a couple of cool effects, so I think you liked it. Okay, now it's time to move on and take care of the next section.